Do you have a paranormal encounter you'd like to share with us? Send us an email with your story for a chance of it being featured on Weird World. Some Weird World viewers seem like magnets to strange events. One, named Jack, says he's witnessed many during his lifetime and this experience, although not his first, is one of his most vivid encounters. In 1970, Jack was aged seven and his family were living in a small ex-mining village called New Hartley in northeast England, UK. Also within Jack's family were his slightly older brother and their mum and dad. They had always lived in housing provided by the colliery where his dad worked. However, when his father was eventually made redundant from the mines, his parents took on a council house in the same village. This was a much smaller home, but at least they would still live near friends, albeit in what Jack describes as a very active house. Jack can distinctly remember his first visit to the house when both his mother and father seemed a little weird. His 10-year-old self just put it down to their being nervous and trying to please their sons, as if wanting to convince them that they needed to be there. The reality was that, yes, they did need a roof over their heads, but his parents' nervousness still seemed strange. As they stood there chatting in the empty living room, the noises began. Jack's brother had just used the toilet and water pipes in the upstairs floors were banging. The banging was really loud and his dad explained that it was an airlock in the pipe. The two innocent boys knew nothing about paranormal phenomena and took it as the case, but thinking back over it now tells him a very different story. He feels the family never really settled into that house, but it was difficult to explain. Having had open coal fires at the previous house, they found that the central heating always seemed problematic. Not all rooms could be made warm, and that effect would shift from room to room on an almost daily basis. The airlock was always blamed for that too. Jack remembers their parents constantly seeming nervous and trying to reassure them. As he grew older, he began learning more and would soon discover that central heating water is not the same water that comes from taps or fills toilet cisterns. He grew more and more wary as each week passed and his knowledge grew. The first incident happened to Jack's brother in an occurrence that would set off a series of events that would terrorise every one of them in that house. On this day, his brother was going down the stairs a few steps ahead of Jack. Without warning and in his full view, his brother was thrown off the middle steps of those stairs and landed in a heap at the bottom. The boy was beside himself with fear, screaming and frightened, while Jack guesses that he himself was in some kind of childhood daze, with the event not really registering at first. His mother came rushing to his brother and picked him up. He was screaming, I was thrown down, and crying with fear. After a few seconds, his mam came at Jack, shouting and blaming him for the fall. Jack's brother quickly grabbed her and implored that it hadn't been Jack, that he was at the top of the stairs and coming down behind. He told her that he had been thrown and didn't know why. This was a key point in their occupancy of the house and Jack remembers the fear on his mother's face, a look of utter terror and distress. She pulled the two boys quickly away from the stairs and sat down, mumbling and rambling to herself, muttering a name and claiming a cursed house. Jack and his brother had never seen their mother like this and so stepped away to leave the house and her worrying reaction. Jack wasn't home when their dad returned from work but recalls that he also distinctly changed. He never again spoke of the airlock banging and thumping upstairs at random and instead seemed to withdraw into his own little world. In the following weeks, Jack recalls his brother talking to their ma'am as they watch TV and nudging him to listen in on the conversation. Their ma'am now again mentioned a woman's name, a woman who it seems had lived and died in their house. 
He later found out that the house had been built in 1939, so the ghost could have been anyone. But the woman who passed before his family got it was called Gwenny, short for Gwendolyn. Their mother was blaming the ghost of this woman for all of their problems, and while Jack didn't really register much, he was aware that his brother took it quite seriously. The following year, his parents split, although the reason wasn't so much the fault of the house, and after some messy legal stuff, his mother became a single parent of the two boys. They stayed in the house, and her mumbling about curses and other strange things continued. Eventually, Jack's brother left to start his own family elsewhere, and his mam also moved out to remarry. Jack stayed on and kept the council house as his own, and remembers that, strangely, all of the noises from pipes banging had seemed gone by then, until a different kind of strange occurrence started to occur. Now working and playing hard, usually Jack's Saturday mornings would result in a lie-in. His bedroom was directly above the kitchen, and on one particular clear Saturday morning, Jack lay there half asleep. However, he started to hear noises in the kitchen beneath him. It was 10am and Jack lived alone, but he could hear the sounds of a spoon stirring in a teacup and the sounds of a cup being moved slowly along the kitchen worktop. The sounds thoroughly alarmed him as he knew he was alone and there was definitely no one staying over. He quickly got up and went downstairs to the kitchen. There, right before him, was a teacup with a spoon in it. His benches had definitely been clear, and yet somehow a teacup and spoon had been placed there on the bench. So he'd definitely not dreamt it. Something had indisputably made those noises using his items. He noted that there was no strange feeling in the house, no coldness, no smells, nothing. But that would not be the last time he heard mysterious noises in the kitchen when lying in bed, although on subsequent occasions he'd go to the kitchen and nothing would be misplaced. The scariest event happened about a year later, one night when his girlfriend was visiting. He and his girlfriend were sitting on the sofa, with his dog seated between them in the living room, a room with only one door for entering and leaving. The TV was on and they were relaxing when suddenly things quickly changed. The room's temperature dramatically plummeted down to freezing cold. This he remembers very clearly. The warm room going to ice cold in 10 seconds was surreal. Although the house had brought some random cold rooms before, it had been nothing like what was happening here. Jack's dog went from being playful to now sitting alert and staring at the door to the room. They watched as his head then began following something coming through the door. He was silent throughout and his head turned with precision. As his head turned to where both Jack's and his girlfriend's legs were stretched out, they saw an apparition which his dog's head had followed before they saw it for themselves. They saw a woman's leg literally walk through their outstretched legs. The leg was clearly discernible and full of detail in colour, but not fully formed, perhaps a little misty or hazy. It moved with the same speed at which a human's leg would move as they walked. The foot on the leg was wearing a granny slipper, a fabric slipper with fur around the upper seam. The slipper was patterned and was blue, and the leg of the apparition wore brown tights. Above that was a mustard yellow patterned dress. The apparition only went as far as thigh height. All three watched as it walked toward the window and then faded out. When it faded, Jack's dog then snapped out of his stare and began playing again. Jack's girlfriend launched into huge screams and frantically gathered her belongings. As she did, Jack sat there realising that the room was now warming back up quickly. Jack's girlfriend would not be consoled and continued screaming. She demanded that Jack take her home and that was the last time he saw her. She dropped him for some unknown reason, although Jack knew the truth was his house, which had shown its true, haunted, colours. Strangely, the house never gave him problems after that, 
and he later moved out to be with another partner. He knows that several families have since lived in that house and he's always wondered if those people have had similar experiences.